car carrier Trianon, owned by the Norwegian shipping company Will Wilhelmsen and operated by Wilhelmsen Wilhelmsen Logistics, is moored in the port of Zeebrugge in Belgium. Will Wilhelmsen is one of the largest companies in the Roro car carrier market. The Trianon is the sister ship of the Tricolor, the ship that left the port of Zeebrugge in December 2002, bound for Southampton. In the early hours of 14 December 2002, the Tricolor set sail for Southampton. There were more than 2,800 brand new cars parked on the enormous ship's car decks, destined for the American market. At 2.15, in the middle of the night, disaster strikes. The container vessel Cariba hits the Tricolor, which capsizes and sinks within half an hour. Thanks to prompt and correct action and thorough training, the ship's 24 crew members managed to evacuate the vessel in time. Everyone is rescued. The 190 meter long Tricolor sinks to the bottom of the channel, where it comes to rest on her port side. In this case, I think uh, we had um, everything against us. Uh, the collision impact, uh, speed, uh, the fact that the vessel was turning because our captain obviously when he saw this vessel coming up on him on the port side, he made a, a hard starboard maneuver uh, in order to try to get away from and avoid the collision, but unfortunately that was too late. The Tricolor is now almost entirely submerged in one of the busiest shipping lanes in the world. It poses a serious danger to other vessels, and it's also leaking bunker oil. The Tricolor sank, in fact, in not only in the middle of very dense traffic area in the North Sea, but also in a place that was out of the protection of the Flemish banks and vulnerable to wind, current and sea. So the Asian Hercules was uh, uh, put in place with some empty barges to pick up the oil. The owner's top priority is to do all they can to prevent and minimize oil pollution. The floating shear legs, Asian Hercules II, is sent to the Tricolor. The vessel serves as a stable work platform for the salvage team who are going to attempt to remove the oil that is still inside the ship. Divers are sent down to inspect the vessel. This is dangerous work. In addition to the extremely strong current, the fierce December wind is really causing high waves and swell. While the divers do their job, preparations for the full removal of the wreck are already being discussed. Well, the first idea was that this wreck has to be removed as quickly as possible. And uh, so we went out in the market uh, with a request, who can remove this wreck quickly and with also uh, due care for the environment and in a, in a feasible way. Despite the winter weather, work continues to remove the bunker oil. The salvage team has developed its own method to do this. The vessel was on its side, so we had access on the bottom to the tanks. We drill holes in it, we bring a valve uh, on that hole so that we can, can, can close it off at the end and then we connect hoses and a pump and in principle then we pump the oil out into, an, into another tank. In two months, the salvage team manages to pump over most of the 2100 tons of oil from the vessel. Part of the oil remains out of reach in tanks in the engine room or is spread across the car decks. Unfortunately, it cannot be avoided that some oil also escapes into the sea. Preparations for one of the largest wreck removal operations in history get underway immediately after the oil cleanup. The Tricolor's owners, Will Wilhelmsen, sign a contract with the combination Tricolor Salvage, which involves the Dutch companies Smit Salvage and Moltreship, together with Skaldis and URS from Belgium. 
the consortium of the four companies is facing a tremendous task. The 32 meter wide Tricolor is resting on its port side on the bottom of the sea. Although the vessel is very strong when afloat, it's far too fragile in its present position to be lifted in its entirety, or even to be uprighted. The salvage team decides to resort to a drastic method. The Tricolor will be cut into nine large pieces, which will then be lifted one by one. To commence the complex operation, two work platforms are assembled on either side of the wreck. These platforms have extendable legs, which are placed on the sea floor at some 30 meters water depth, so that a stable work platform is established. Never before has a vessel of this size been cut into pieces. The salvage team will use a special type of cutting wire which they developed and used once before during the salvage of the Russian submarine Kursk. But the Tricolor is much larger, not to mention the fact that the ship must be cut into nine sections. Extensive testing shows that the unique cutting wire is effective enough to be used for this job. Following testing, the real work begins. The salvage team's plan is to make the cuts by moving the wire from the bottom up and back and forth between the two work platforms. To do so, the wire must first be placed underneath the wreck. This involves drilling under the tricolor with a flexible drill. Once the drill emerges from the seabed on the other side of the wreck, a hollow tube is pulled back. The cutting wire will then be guided through this tube from one side to the other. Cutting preparations have been completed. The cutting experts go over the final details. Huge winches on the work platforms pull the cutting wire tight before it will be manipulated back and forth. For the first cut we make, we use two wires. We cutting until we reach the propeller shaft and then we interchange the wire with a new one. But the other cuts, the other seven cuts, we use only one wire. And every wire consists of approximately uh, 900 to 1,000 bushings. The cutting wire consists of a series of small cylinders over a steel wire. The cylinders are coated with weedia, a mix of special types of steel, which is virtually as hard as diamond. The green light is given. The cutting wire is driven by huge winches installed on the platforms. The wire travels through a number of different spools as it makes its way under the wreck. The cutting wire works its way through the steel wreck, which has a breadth of over 30 meters. The speed of the saw wire is average approximately one meter per second with a force on the hauling end of 60 tons and on the other end a back uh, tension of uh, 20 to 24 tons. Oh, 
net naar boven kijken, uh, Bjorn. During the cutting, divers continuously inspect the vessel. Every change in position can be crucial. At the same time, the cutting wire is checked constantly. The divers are assisted by other salvage team members at the surface who look over their shoulders with the help of cameras mounted on their diving helmets. We have a, a lot of tide difference. That means that in between the tides, the currents are very strong. And that is yeah, in, in the entrance of the channel. That means that we were not in any shelter or whatever. So the tide that we could possibly be productive in the water was limited to 20 minutes. In addition to checking the cutting, the divers are also busy getting ready to lift the detached sections. Lifting frames are being welded to the side of the ship in order to make it possible to lift these weakened sections. The frames will allow for the eventual safe lifting of the pieces, some of which weigh 3,000 tons. The divers use links to attach scores of lifting cables to the wreck of the Tricolore. We had to uh, install uh, four lifting chains around the propeller, and we had, I think, 12 lifting points in the starboard side aft. That was a lot of uh, preparation work for us to do, because on the, on the starboard side, it was in uh, very shallow water that we had to do that. Two of the world's largest floating shear legs have arrived at the Tricolore location for the tremendous lifting job at open sea. The idea is that they'll be used to lift the detached sections one by one. Then the sections will be placed on a huge barge that will be anchored nearby at the shear legs. The first uh, section was the stern section. And it was estimated that it was weighing about uh, 3,200 ton. So to get the lifting attachments to this uh, section, we found a, uh, a lot of points, but not real strong points, but a lot of points where we could put uh, some force on. So in the, uh, in the engineering phase, we decided to go for about uh, 150 ton per point. As the lifting cables are slowly raised, the first things we see are the lifting frames. Now, over six months after it sank, the Tricolore is slowly but surely emerging from the depths. The various car decks are easily recognizable. Now, we can also see the incredible job that the cutting wire did. All of the decks, including the entire engine, were cut practically straight through. During the lift, there's always the, the tension, of course, because it's, it's all... Uh, coming together then, and when you see the, the rigging uh, or the, the starboard side come above the water and you have a quick look and you think that everything is in position, uh, that makes you proud. The higher this section comes out of the water, the more weight is put on the massive shear legs. Lifting is deliberately slow in order to allow the water to drain from the ship properly. After all, every bit of excess weight must be avoided. Also, the weight must be evenly distributed between the two shear legs, and the center of gravity must remain very stable. Otherwise, the lifting cables would be subject to unpredictable forces. As soon as the section is lifted out of the water, the barge is maneuvered underneath it. Next, the section weighing more than 3,000 tons is slowly lowered onto the barge and taken away to Zeebrugge in Belgium for scrapping. The 
first huge heavy section is now completely out of the water. Weather conditions are favorable, otherwise an operation of this sort could never take place at open sea. There's little left of the Tricolor's valuable cargo. Meter by meter, the barge is maneuvered into the proper position. This is a crucial moment. Nothing must go wrong now. The shear legs have reached their maximum lifting height. In order to create more space between the barge and the wreck side, the ballast tanks of the barge are filled with water. As a result, it's floating extremely low on the water. With utmost caution, the section is placed onto the barge. The next step is to see whether the section is stable enough for transportation to Zeebrugge. You feel there is tension coming by every hour. And the next step, when you're lifting, when the vessel comes above water, when it moves, when it really is above the surface, then you have the full load in your two cranes, uh, then you have to move, you have to move with the cranes, you have to move the barges, and that's all tension until the, the section rests on the barge. And you see the tension from the uh, load indicators going down because you transfer the load onto the barge, then also you feel that your tension is going down with the same steps. An anti-pollution vessel is on hand during the entire operation, and the French and Belgian authorities are closely involved in order to prevent damage to the environment as much as possible. The salvage team is making good progress. The first two sections of the stern of the Tricolore have been removed, and now work is starting on the ship's bow section. Thousands of tons of twisted steel are lifted out of the water. The first two sections were the heaviest, and it's no wonder that's where the engine rooms were located. Even though the sections that are being lifted now are smaller, it doesn't necessarily mean the job is any easier. The vessel's structure has been drastically weakened, not only by all of the cutting, but also due to the merciless swell and waves. It's becoming increasingly difficult to lift large sections in their entirety out of the water. Now that the huge sections have been lifted out of the water, they're being taken to the port in Zeebrugge. Extreme caution is exercised in guiding the barge through the locks in the harbor en route to a special scrapyard. We had uh, spe a special prepared uh, scrapping site. The soil, the, the, the foundation was plastic. There uh, metal plates on top of it so that any oil which could come off from the vessel would not drain into the, into the soil. And uh, in that place, that, that particular place, we have scrapped actually the whole vessel. And we have done that without any contamination to any parts of the, the soil in Zeebrugge. Dismantling the Tricolore is a remarkable undertaking as it is. Tens of thousands of tons of steel must be cut into smaller pieces. There is nothing left to the once so proud Tricolore. The new luxury cars, of which there are over 2,800, likewise are a sad sight. We 
we had a very strict regime in place to bring cars to the shore uh, and, and dismantle them in various factories in, uh, in Belgium. And each car required a disposal certificate from all those uh, manufacturers. salvage operation has now entered the next phase. Bad winter weather has sidelined the salvage team. Now, five months after the recovery of five sections, it's time to finish the job. Using a huge wreck grab, increasingly smaller pieces are lifted out of the sea. Shortly after the collision, but also during the removal operation, a number of cars and parts of the ship were washed into the sea. Now, all of this must be cleaned up. It was not only the ship we had to remove, it uh, was also small uh, metal pieces, cars um, and, and in a certain marked area um, which was agreed uh, with uh, the authorities and the client. Um, that was also a difficult job, uh, looking first of all uh, after these uh, smaller pieces uh, by magnetometer and multi-beam systems and then uh, to remove them of course and, and if you for example take one car uh, to, to grab it is not so easy uh, of course. Even to locate it is not easy. It had disappeared, could be under the mud uh, or in the sand, and, uh, so that was a difficult operation. After the winter we had to, uh, to decide for another method uh, due to the, the situation of the, the vessel itself. Uh, it had uh, deteriorated uh, very much uh, due to the weather, con mainly due to the weather conditions. It had fallen apart. Um, and we had to bring in a, a huge crane with a, a huge rag wrap and, and rip it into pieces. Uh, but much smaller pieces, of course, than I initially thought. The contract stipulates that the salvage team must leave the sea floor as clean as possible. Under the watchful eye of French authorities, truly every last piece is tracked down for removal. This is time-consuming work. Even though the wreck grab keeps bringing up sizable pieces, it still takes longer than lifting the large sections. The work goes on for months. Then, at the end of the summer of 2004, the immense job is done. The Tricolore and her entire cargo have been recovered. After a year and a half of hard work, one of the largest salvage operations ever has reached a successful conclusion. For the owner, too, a tiring time has come to an end. Well, it's, it's obviously not uh, good for your reputation to have your vessel uh, sunk and, uh, and, uh, and, and the cargo lost, and also the vessel lost. But I think, uh, all in all, I think we have proven that the shipping industry can uh, take care of, 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 uh, of things when, when, when bad things happen. Uh, and I think the shipping industry needs to prove that because, we had, unfortunately, we have a few incidents where that has not been the case. That has been unfortunate for the shipping business and uh, I think this proves the opposite.